Vanessa, thank you so much for joining us today. You're so welcome. It's lovely to be here, Matt. Awesome. Now tell me, how long ago did you actually join the Ooh. International Coaching Institute and why did you become a coach? Okay, so we've got to go back a long way uh, to 2014 in September I joined. And the reason why I joined was 2013 was really, really turbulent. Um, I had a change in my structure at work. I went back to an old job I hated. I'd been doing a leadership program where we got to meet people who were so passionate about what they did. And I realized that I actually was no longer passionate about what I did. And then towards the end of that year, I had a relationship I'd been in that I just thought was my forever person and that ended really suddenly. So wow. I kind of had a pity party for quite some months and was in a real rut and just felt like I needed to do something different because yeah. I'd been in my job for 15 years and okay, wow. uh, I, knew I could just blink an eye and it'd be another 10 years. So yeah. Kind of, it was serendipitous. I was at a party and uh, a lady mentioned a book and I bought the book and right at the end in the last chapter, it talked about coaching. And I thought, oh, maybe that's what I could do. So I started exploring online to find places to go and learn from. And there was such a strong values match to the school. And um, so, yeah, I, I jumped into my first course uh, very trepidatiously but i'm yeah. um, very excited uh in 2014 september that's awesome when you had that moment when you you read that book mm -hmm. and you learn about coaching and you're like okay well maybe maybe this is this could maybe be the thing mm -hmm. when you went from then doing research to then starting a course and thinking and, and the reason why i'm about to ask this question is because like when you do your course you don't know if it's for you yet yeah you have to take a leap of faith. You have to be like, let me see what's going to happen. Because I speak to a lot of people and they're like, oh, I'm just not sure if I should be a coach yet. And I always say to them, I'm like, the only thing you can do is try this out. Like, that's all you've got. Give it a go. Worst case scenario, you learn a bunch of stuff about yourself and then you realize you go in another direction, yeah. which I've seen some people do. What was it like for you in that moment where you're like, okay, I'm looking for the next phase of my life. Um, I'm going to try coaching out. What was that like? It was scary. It was scary because um, I had to enter a room with a complete bunch of strangers and, um, you know, just it felt really vulnerable to, mm. to turn up and say, here I am. I was in my early 40s. My life wasn't where I wanted it to be. I wanted to do something differently so badly, but I still had a lot of doubt around whether this could be it. I wanted it to be it. Um, so, and, and I live regionally. So there was a lot of effort to get there to do um, the course and to, to go there that first weekend. So I, I think it was just, in my view, something had to change. And if I didn't step into this, then would I have the courage to do anything else? And wow. what I found was it was wow. just an amazing supportive environment that um, that I felt like I was in the right place. By, by wow. the end, of, like the first morning, it was like, oh, no, I've made the right decision. Thank okay. I, uh, relief, relief. <laughs> I've stepped in. I haven't stepped into a room full of crazy people. Yeah, I've stepped that's into right. the right room. Um, <laughs> something, <laughs> something that you said was just really stood out for me, which was if I don't do this, will I have the courage to do something else? Tell me more about that. Yeah, well, I really wanted to change my life. I, I wasn't happy with where I'd landed at that point in time. I wanted something different, but I couldn't figure out what it was. And so because I'd sort of been like, you know, just following the, the dots, <laughs> sort of bouncing right. from one thing to another, and then arriving at this decision to come and try out the school and see whether it was a fit for me. If I chickened out of that, then I felt like, you know, what's going to happen? I'm just going to be, like I said earlier, in this job for the next 10 years and wake up mm. one day and go, I'm still unhappy with my life. Mm. And I could have done so much more and I could have, you know, just had a whole different experience. And um, I knew that I just had to lean into it, even though I didn't even understand what that meant. It was yeah. just like, I'm just going to go. And, you know, your friends and your family are like, oh, yeah, whatever, that sounds a bit weird, but okay. Right, right. And so I had nobody kind of in my inner circle that was sort of going, this is awesome, let's go together. So yeah. um, it was just that determination to you. me to do something. Yeah. Good on you. That's awesome. Um, there's something that um, I'm, heard, I'm sure you've heard this, Tony Robbins said, um, it's in the moments of decisions 
that our destiny is shaped. And what you just said is a great example of that. You, you actually consciously paused and asked yourself, if I don't take this, you know, like it's a risk, but I guess it's a, it's like, it's a small risk, but it's a big risk as well, in a way to just try this course out. I'm probably not going to do anything. I'm going to hold myself back. And then what's the consequences of holding myself back? And, you know, I'm going to see myself in 10 years doing nothing and I'm going to regret that. Um, One of the things that I always talk about is with a big enough why you can do, you can take care of anyhow. And I really believe that if you are um, appropriately inspired to do something, then you, it's not that you have a guarantee, but you're way more likely to actually do it. What was your motivator back then and now being what is it what six seven eight is it eight years uh well i started my business my first business in 2015 so a year okay. after i'd oh, come six home. seven years so seven years later has your why evolved so what was your why back then has it evolved now yeah that's a great question Um, I'll start with remembering back to that very first weekend that I came in and and I remember it was Joe Parnay back then and um, he talked about there's uh, like the top 5% go on and make an amazing career out of coaching and talking about decisions in that moment, I decided I'm going to be in that 5%. Didn't know how, didn't know anything about how that was going to happen, but that was a driving force because I knew once I'd made the choice to leave my job, there was no turning back. I was never going back to um, ask for my old job back, so I had to make it work. And I felt that the more I got into the course, the more I got to know my mentors and my peers, the more I trusted the system and trusted that if I keep going and I keep applying it, I will make it. And I just had to truly believe in myself. And I I think the other thing that was a driving motivator for me and has been all this time, I had two young children. You know, they were both in primary school when I started and now they're young adults and they're amazing. But it was like I wanted to show them to demonstrate and role model that, It doesn't matter if you finish year 12 and you flunk, you know, year 12, you don't know what you're going to do with your life. Look at your mum. I'm in my 40s and I've just completely changed this whole like job for a life into a business. And I wanted to do them proud because they really had to support me through that, all the study and all the craziness of um, starting work and all that kind of stuff. So so I say it's a dual purpose there, partly my determination to be in the 5% and I didn't lose sight of that. And then I wanted my kids to be proud. They're big motivators. Mm. And over the last seven years, has that evolved or are they still, it's like, for example, I imagine that the motivation for your family is never going to go away, right? That's always going to be there, even when they're, fully adult you know they're just stepping into adulthood you're still going to want to take care of them of course has something else tapped in or is it is it mainly that or no 100 percent. so as i've also first you know um six years or so i was doing leadership coaching and then we had covid and things Mm. changed and i changed my trajectory uh i'm now working as a money coach with women in business And that is something that I am passionate about. It is about breaking cycles. It is about like, there's something within me that says, if I can go through what I've gone through and if I can uh, create wealth for myself, I've got something really, really special to share to change other people's lives. That totally has become the new driver. It's the impact that I can make out there in the world that drives me. It's really good. I, I, um, one of the things that I love about interviewing so many people and it's kind of like this gift that I've been given to be able to interview so many people through the school and just and just hear all the stories. And one of the things that stands out to me every single time is the people that are that seem to be the the happiest, that are enjoying themselves for the longest, that, that seem to be the most fulfilled, they're always driven by a mission. It's yeah. never just Oh, you know, I, I just let me tell it. Let me brag to you about how much money I made this month. Yeah, yeah. You know, let, 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 let me tell you about that. And I, and I, and 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 of course, you, you know, it's good to make a living doing what we do, and we can make a great living. But the driver is always because I get to do this. And man, you got to see the, the look on their face when they change and when they progress. And it's a wonderful thing to be driven by 
a, a level of contribution in our lives. I think it's really special to be, even just to be able to do that is a beautiful thing. And it's such a gift and it's a gift that we're given through the school, through our courses that we um, apply, everything we're learning. Like who are we not to really? Yeah. How can yeah. we not share this? I love that. I love that. Now you are, I would, I would love to get a bit of information on this because um, you've been here for uh, six, seven years, right? So you are obviously not a current student still, but you, you, you were a full-time student for a long time. Um, and now you are in an established business, right? Cause it's, you, you, you're past that phase of, oh my God, you know, <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> um, what would you, if you were to give yourself some advice, yeah. right for, for you now being established if you were to go back and give year one you some yeah. advice because people that are watching this are about to step into their first 12 months yeah. which is usually the 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 12 months of the i think the most amount of pressure did you find that oh yes yeah. oh yeah because it's all just like I'm, I'm shifting my identity I, you know i'm moving from employee and my family doesn't understand and what advice would you give yourself if you could go back then it's funny you say that, you know, like it felt like a rocket ship, getting a rocket ship off the ground yeah. is the beginning of a business, right? Yeah. And you might call me crazy, but I started a new business last year. Wow. Uh, so I feel like I've been going through Doing that. Doing it again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, there's two things that have given me the confidence to do that. One is that I'm now in partnership with another um, person who went to the same school. So I know right. that foundations are super strong. Right. Secondly, it's around, I know... I know there's a system. I know there's a structure. So for me, what I'd be saying to somebody who's just sitting on the precipice going, do I want to be doing this as a business? Yeah. Everything you need to start and all the support and mentoring you need is already given to you. You've just got to take the step and then ask for help. So if I could go back to that me who I'm really proud of because that's what I did, I was absolutely not sure. I was so uh, like, Sales? I don't know how to make sales. Clearly, I had no money coming in. So it's leaning into the gaps and the strengths and um, and trusting and backing yourself. Because I think you can really back yourself knowing you've got a whole cheer squad back over here in the corner that are going to yeah. support you. Yeah, yeah. That's great advice. And what would you say to someone who's listening to this right now, who's thinking, wow, you know, that's an inspiration. I would, I would love to have even 10% of what you're talking about um, and maybe they're doubting themselves and they're worried about it and they're unsure of what they should do. What would you say to someone who's thinking about starting today? My biggest thing that I've learned in, in the last how many years it's been is you just need to take the next step. What we often do is try to solve a problem that's way out there in the yeah. future. Okay. Like, oh, my God, how am I going to sign a $100,000 contract? Well, yeah. let's think about, you know, starting the business first. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just put up a Facebook page. Just do one thing. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, what's the one thing you can do? And that's something that I learned um, and leaned into. Like, it's just you've just got to put one step in front of the other. Yeah, so yeah. don't. Don't worry about what's going to happen further down the track. Back yourself to make the next step because the one after is going to become very obvious to you once you've started that one and you yeah. just build momentum. Yeah, that's awesome. Vanessa, congratulations thank on you. how much you've achieved thank and you. it's wonderful to reconnect and thank you for being yeah. here today. Yeah, you're so welcome, Matt.